safety we do ask that you please remain seated while the train is in motion keeping all of your body parts inside the train at all times and please no eating or drinking except for water and if you do have little ones with you we do ask that the adults please sit at the end of the row if that's not practical and please make sure the kids are held or are easily within your reach thank you uh, as we get ready to leave the uh, Smith Creek Station, let's wave goodbye to our Station Master, Gordon. Thank you, Gordon. And we're now moving into the uh, Railroad Junction District here at Greenfield Village. And the first building you can see here is the Smith Creek Depot building. This was built back in uh, 1858 and was located in Smith Creek, Michigan, which is roughly eight and a half miles southwest of Port Huron. And it was on the Grand Trunk Railroad line that ran between Detroit and Port Huron. Now this is a typical small town depot building, and that means half the building is residential. That's where the station master lives with his family. The other half is open to the public. That's where you go in and buy your tickets for the train. Now our newest addition to Greenfield Village is that open air building on our left hand side. That's the vegetable building, which was part of the Detroit Central Market. The vegetable building was built back in 1860 and was located in downtown awesome. Detroit. Now the brick building on our left is the uh, Detroit, Toledo and Milwaukee Roundhouse. This is where we service and maintain our steam locomotives as well as our rolling stock. Now our roundhouse was built in uh, the year 2000 and is based on a roundhouse that was built in 1884 in Marshall, Michigan. That roundhouse remained in operation until the 1930s when it was closed and became a furnace factory. But ultimately the building was torn down, but we were able to secure some of the parts from that building along with the, the uh, blueprints and we used that in constructing our roundhouse here at the village. Now to our left, we can't really see it very well because of the pine trees, but that's our Liberty Craft area. 
And this is where we have skilled artisans who do such things as glass blowing, pottery making, weaving, and printing. You'll get a better view of it once we go around the curve over here. And we're now moving into the, the uh, working farm district. We have seven acres here that we plow and plant every year, growing such things as field corn, winter wheat, rye, and hay. Right now on the right-hand side is a small orchard featuring heirloom apples. And up ahead on the right is the Firestone Farmhouse and the Firestone Barn. The farmhouse was built in 1828 and was located in Columbia, Ohio. That's the birthplace of Harvey Firestone. Harvey went on to create the Firestone Tire Cover Company in 1901, and he and Henry Ford became very good friends as uh, Firestone supplied many of the tires that were used on Henry Ford's Model T's. And right now we're coming up to the Firestone Station. We'll be stopping here for about eight minutes. You'll be in advance of the train on the right-hand side, but we do ask that you please remain seated until you hear the uh, train whistle. That indicates that the engineer has applied the air brakes and the train will not be moving. We would not want to have a moving train while you're standing up. remain seated folks let's wait for that train whistle to sound and there good morning ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome aboard the Greenfield Village Railroad and for your safety we do ask that you please remain seated keeping your hands legs arms head and feet inside the train at all times and please no eating or drinking while on the train except for water now, if you do have little ones with you, we do ask that the adults please sit at the end of the row. If that's not practical, then please make sure the kids are held or are easily within your reach. Thank you. Uh, 728808, uh, George Lake, highball. Why are you? I don't like that. You have like a black hair. Now, as we start to leave the uh, Firestone Station, let's wave goodbye to our two station masters. That would be Bob and Daniel. Thank you, gentlemen. And we're beginning a 30-minute trip that will take us around the inside perimeter of Greenfield Village. We'll be making two stops along the way. Our first stop will be at Susquehanna, which is where we're heading to right now. And the second stop will be at Smith Creek before we return here to the Firestone Station. And on our journey, we'll be going through some 300 years of American history and innovation. And uh, we have nearly 100 buildings here at the village that you can go through. Many of them do have presenters inside who will be happy to talk with you about the buildings as well as the people who may have lived in or worked in these buildings. Right now we're coming into the first of our seven historic districts. This is the Henry Ford Model T District and that white farmhouse up ahead is the birthplace of Henry Ford. He was born in one of the upstairs bedrooms on July 30th of 1863. Now the, farm, the farmhouse itself was built two years earlier in 1861 and it was located in the general area of Fort Road and Greenfield Roads in Dearborn. That's about three miles away from where we are right now. And the original, originally the farm was about 140 acres and later grew to over 230 acres, but uh, regardless of the size, Henry Ford did not enjoy farm work. And he wound up leaving the farm at the age of 16 to work in the machine shops of Detroit. Now as we pass the farmhouse, you can see down Main Street, and there we have such buildings as the Wright Brothers Cycle Shop, the Wright Brothers Home. There's also Mrs. Collins Millinery and the Heinz Building. Now, here's our question of the day. What was the first product produced by Heinz? Horseradish. Well, I heard the answer. Somebody said horseradish, and that is correct. Wow. Very good. Very good. I didn't know that. And right now, we're coming into the uh, Thomas Edison and Work District. 
And there's a statue of Thomas Edison on the left hand side. He is sitting there and he's probably thinking about his next invention. Now, many of his inventions were actually developed here at the Menlo Park Laboratory, and that's back where he developed the incandescent light bulb, along with the phonograph and many, many other inventions. Now, when Henry Ford was talking with Thomas Edison about moving the building here to Greenfield Village, uh, Thomas Edison said yes, but and there always seems to be a but, and that but was that the building had to be put on New Jersey soil. So Henry Ford got seven railroad cars, loaded them up with uh, soil from New Jersey, he dumped those uh, that load of dirt in the area that you, where you see the building now stands. Um, now the mustard colored building on our left hand side is the Sarah Jordan Boarding House. That's one of the first buildings in the world to be wired for electric lights. Uh, next door to the boarding house is the uh, Fort Myers Laboratory. And this is where Edison would continue doing research and development while vacationing or living in Florida. In fact, one of the things he was trying to do there was to find a substitute for uh, natural rubber as he felt that the country was too dependent on foreign sources for its rubber. And we're now coming into the Porches and Parlors District. This features a variety of homes that individuals have lived in over the years. And uh, these that buildings so can give you some ideas about the lifestyles and traditions of those who lived in them, as well as the times in which they I've lived. Never gone and right now we're passing the uh, Ackley Cover Bridge. This was built back in 1832 and was located in southwest Pennsylvania. Now the oldest building in the village is the Cotswold Cottage. It's that limestone building at the top of the hill on our left hand side. It was built in the early 1600s in England and Henry Ford and his wife Clara were on the lookout for a building that they could actually purchase like this. And one of their agents found this building. It's called the Rose Cottage and Henry Ford bought it, had it taken apart and then reassembled here in Greenfield Village. Right now we're coming into our Susquehanna station. We'll be stopping here for four minutes. You'll be able to exit on the left-hand side of the train, but please remain seated until you hear the train whistle. And there's the whistle. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're welcome aboard the Greenfield Village Railroad. And for your safety, we do ask that you please remain seated while the train is in motion, keeping all of your body parts inside the train. Now, if you, uh, we also ask that you please do not eat or drink on the train except for water. And if you have little ones with you, we do ask that the adults please sit at the end of the row. If that's not practical, then please make sure the kids are held or are easily within your reach. Thank you. As we leave the Susquehanna station, let's wave goodbye to Mike, our station master. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. And we're now moving further into the Porches and Parlors District. And this large white building on our left-hand side is the Susquehanna Plantation House. This was built in 1835 and was located in the Tidewater region of Maryland. It was part of a, a, seven, part of a 700 acre plantation that grew wheat, corn, and tobacco. Now the oldest American-made home here is that reddish-colored one. It's the Plimpton Family Home. This was built in uh, 1640 in South Sudbury, Massachusetts. And if you can believe it, uh, there were two adults and seven children living in this one-room building. Wow. And here comes the Ferris Windmill. This was built in the mid-1600s on the North Shore of Cape Cod. Behind that is the Daggett Farmhouse. This was built in 1754 in Coventry, Connecticut. And it's an example of what rural living in colonial America was like. And we do have presenters inside who will be happy to talk with you about those early days, early colonial days. Over in this area and get ready for the next time they have to go to work. And this is 
So all of the horses are in the barn area at the moment. Now the locomotive pulling our train today is called the Torch Lake. It's also the oldest regularly operating steam locomotive in the United States. It was built back in 1873 by the Mason Machine Works of Taunton, Massachusetts. Now this uh, locomotive was originally used by the Calumet and Hecla Mining Company in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. It was used by the mining company to pull copper ore cars. The uh, locomotive weighs in at 35 tons. It has a tender capacity of uh, 1,200 gallons of water and one ton of coal. And now I'm going to uh, suggest you may want to sit back and relax and enjoy the ride. And I'm going to stop talking for a couple of minutes and let you enjoy the ride. In fact, you might want to try to imagine what it may have been like back in the late 1800s and early 1900s to ride the train with a steam-powered locomotive on the local train. Okay, I've got to tell you what just happened with that locomotive. It did what we call a blowdown. And that means uh, that's where they try to blow out the impurities and scales that build up inside the boiler. And by getting rid of them, that helps improve the efficiency of the boiler operation. Charter School that's open to students who live in Wayne County, Michigan. Students are selected by lottery, and we have about 500 students who attend the school during set when school is in session in grades 9 through 12. Now, the ninth graders actually have their classes over at the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation, but the 10th, 11th, and 12th graders have their classes in this area. Now, as we go around the curve up here on the left-hand side, you'll see a large boulder that has been painted blue. That contains the names of all of our recently graduated high school seniors. Now up ahead is the, is the uh, rather unique set of classrooms, that's what it is. These are Pullman cars that have been converted into classrooms and they're used by our seniors. Now as we pass the classrooms, you can see the uh, Swanee Lagoon on our left. This is a catch basin for water overflow. Now on a sunny day, a 
often see turtles basking in the sunshine on many longer branches that's floating in the lagoon. And we have one uh, turtle in particular that is worthy of mention. He's a snapping turtle, and he's as large as a garbage can lid. And we call him Godzilla. west of us, and it was located on the stagecoach route between Detroit and Chicago. And right now we're coming up to our Firestone State, or I'm sorry, we'll be coming up to our Smith Creek Station. And we'll be stopping here for four minutes. You'll be able to exit the train on the left-hand side. This is a good jumping off point for uh, Liberty Craft Works, Railroad Junction, and Main Street. Now I do ask that you please remain seated until you hear the train whistle. That indicates that the engineer has applied the air brakes, the train will not be moving. All right, so please remain seated. Let's wait for the whistle. And there it is. Thank <laughs> you. 